Welcome to the walkthrough video for Vibrant's neurotransmitter test. My name is Carrie Luetti, and I am part of Vibrant's clinical team and the education specialist team. Today, I will be introducing some of the highlights of the neurotransmitter test, discussing the markers tested, reviewing why providers order this test, identifying which patients may benefit from this test, providing a sample report to review the layout, and discussing other helpful tests to do alongside a neurotransmitter test. Vibrant offers the most comprehensive neurotransmitter test on the market. Our test is a urine test that provides a snapshot of neurotransmitter levels in the body. What are neurotransmitters? Well, they are endogenous chemical messengers that allow neurons to communicate with each other and other target cells throughout the body. There are different types of neurotransmitters. There are inhibitory neurotransmitters, excitatory neurotransmitters, and neuromodulators. And these are the different types of neurotransmitters that we will be looking at on this test. Vibrant tests for 30 different markers, including neurotransmitters, amino acids, and metabolites. You can see each analyte tested and listed by their categorization or their corresponding pathway. Vibrant includes many amino acids, such as tryptophan, tyrosine, taurine, glycine, serine, and aspartate. Some of these act as building blocks for neurotransmitter synthesis, and others exhibit neurotransmitter-like properties. Vibrant not only measures the major neurotransmitters, but they are also measuring precursors, metabolites, and end products of metabolism. This allows for a very comprehensive assessment of neurotransmitters and their metabolism so that we can understand where the issues arise with any imbalances and what to do about them. The different pathways that are comprehensively mapped out include the serotonin pathway, kynurenine pathway, and the catecholamine pathway. We are able to assess the metabolism of these major neurotransmitters from start to end based on the analytes tested. Vibrant also assesses trace monoamines, which include tryptamine, tyramine, and PEA, which stands for phenethylamine. The other neurotransmitters that are tested include glutamate, GABA, histamine, acetylcholine, and oxytocin, which include a mixture of both inhibitory and excitatory neurotransmitters. By analyzing the ratios of various analytes, there can be a greater understanding of enzyme activity involved and the potential for genetic influences, nutrient deficiencies or excesses, and other interferences. Vibrant includes diurnal rhythms for norepinephrine, epinephrine, and creatinine. These diagrams include four points of reference based on the urine collection times to assess the variability of these markers at different points throughout the day. Vibrant's neurotransmitter test is validated in both adult and pediatric populations. Their reference ranges are established based on different age groups. There are different reference ranges for individuals less than 10 years old, between 11 and 14 years old, and those over 15 years old. These reference ranges were established based on data from 192 random healthy individuals and establishing cutoff ranges based on those values. Vibrance neurotransmitter test is a urine test that requires four different samples throughout the day. These include first morning urine, two hours after waking, an evening sample before dinner, and a nighttime sample before bed. Please note that for pediatric patients, a pediatric urine collection bag can be used. It's also important to know that there are certain foods that should be avoided prior to the test as they may influence the results of various analytes. This is due to many foods inherently containing neurotransmitters or high amounts of amino acids that may result in false positive elevations. These include bananas, pineapple, nuts, alcohol, protein powder, and protein shakes. Vibrant is a CLIA and CAP certified lab. The testing methodology for the neurotransmitter test is mass spectrometry. 
It's also helpful to know that Vibrant uses a creatinine adjustment to compensate for any dilute or concentrated urine values based on the creatinine level. There are many reasons why providers order this test. This is a non-invasive test that provides a snapshot into an individual's specific neurotransmitter levels and neurotransmitter metabolism. It can provide insight into what the nervous system's communication is doing. Many providers are generally guided by a trial and error approach when making medication or nutraceutical recommendations. This test takes the guessing out of that process so that specific and applicable interventions can be made. This test is a useful tool for clinicians when monitoring and treating many different types of disorders. These include neurological and mental health disorders, as well as many others that we will address on the next slide. A useful application for this test also includes assessing medication efficacy, as well as responsiveness to help wean medications. Since this test maps out all aspects of neurotransmitter synthesis and metabolism, it can really allow providers to hone in to understand where and why the imbalances are occurring. For example, this test may reveal that serotonin levels are low, but it can also help to reveal why serotonin levels are low based on other abnormalities along the serotonin pathway. There are many patients that can benefit from a neurotransmitter test. Typically, we think of neurological and mental health disorders as the primary patients to benefit from this test, and this is true. Conditions such as multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, autism, depression, and anxiety are all associated with neurotransmitter imbalances. And understanding these imbalances can significantly help these patients. There are also many other conditions and symptoms that can also benefit from a neurotransmitter test. This is also due to the impact of neurotransmitters in the central nervous system versus the peripheral nervous system, which can have very different effects. A good example of this are the different roles of serotonin in the central nervous system versus in the periphery. Serotonin is known to play a role in mood and behavior, but over 90% of serotonin is produced in the GI tract by the enterochromaffin cells. Imbalances in serotonin can affect GI functions such as motility. So understanding these levels can greatly help patients suffering from GI dysfunction. There are also other important relationships between neurotransmitters and other systems such as hormones. So individuals with hormone imbalances might also experience neurotransmitter imbalances and that can be important to understand. There also may be some other symptoms or behaviors not commonly associated with neurotransmitters that actually are associated with imbalanced neurotransmitters. These include insomnia, sexual dysfunction, appetite dysregulation, and behaviors such as aggressiveness or irritability. Any patients manifesting these conditions or symptoms may benefit from taking a closer look at what neurotransmitter levels look like in the body. We are now going to be taking a look at a sample neurotransmitter report. This is the first page, which acts as a summary page for all neurotransmitter markers that are out of range. Here we can clearly see that this patient has low serotonin levels, a high xantharenic acid, a high ratio of HVA to VMA, and a low quinolinic to 5-HIAA ratio. Please note that while the values that are truly out of range, either high or low, are the most significant, any borderline value can also be extremely relevant to a patient's case. These values can be seen in the full report. This page also provides the graphics for the diurnal rhythms for norepinephrine, epinephrine, and creatinine. The actual levels can be found on another page in the report. This is the next page of the report, which begins the review of all analytes on the test. The analytes are categorized into inhibitory neurotransmitters, excitatory neurotransmitters, and other neurotransmitters. This page shows the inhibitory neurotransmitter category, 
which includes markers for serotonin, GABA, glycine, taurine, and 5-HIAA. This is where we can see the exact values to understand whether it's a normal value or a low normal or high normal value. This can be very helpful in understanding somebody's overall inhibitory effect on the nervous system. For any abnormal analyte, a comment will automatically populate to provide some basic information about the analyte. On this page, we can see the excitatory neurotransmitters and their associated levels. This includes neurotransmitters such as dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, histamine, glutamate, aspartate, acetylcholine, and their corresponding metabolites. Understanding the excitatory neurotransmitter levels can provide valuable information about somebody's overall excitation in the nervous system. This next page of the report shows details about other neurotransmitters, which include many metabolites for neurotransmitters, trace monoamines, and chimurinine pathway markers. The next page of the report shows the specific levels for diurnal rhythms at each point in time for norepinephrine, epinephrine, and creatinine. The last page of the report shows the calculated ratios, which allow us to better understand enzymatic activity and the activity of different pathways. One very valuable tool to utilize when interpreting the neurotransmitter test is looking at the overview of pathways for the corresponding neurotransmitter or analyte. This follow the pathways tip can allow providers to see where the exact breakdown is occurring. For example, are serotonin levels low because the kynurenine pathway is being upregulated? By tracking the markers along these pathways, it can be easily determined if this is the case. Let's discuss another example along the catecholamine pathway. You might find that tyrosine levels are good, L-DOPA is high, but dopamine is low. This can help you hone in on the reason why dopamine levels may be low. In this case, it may indicate a potential need for vitamin B6 to facilitate that enzymatic reaction to convert L-DOPA to dopamine. There of course can be other reasons why that enzymatic reaction is not occurring adequately, but overall, having a visual element can be very valuable. Oftentimes, providers are ordering multiple tests for a single patient to assess multiple aspects of somebody's health. Many other tests provide value to help interpret or understand neurotransmitters. One test that holds a lot of value is a micronutrient test. This is helpful because many enzymatic reactions involved in neurotransmitter synthesis or degradation require nutrient cofactors. Having micronutrient data can provide specific information about the particular levels of these nutrients to determine appropriate supplement interventions and dosage information. There are many other tests that also provide value when completed alongside a neurotransmitter test. These include a gut zoomer, to assess for impaired digestion and absorption, leading to decreased amino acids and nutrients that are required for neurotransmitter synthesis. The NeuroZoomer Plus also helps to assess for antibodies to different neurotransmitters and receptors. The methylation panel can help to look for impairments in methylation cycle affecting neurotransmitter synthesis since many neurotransmitters rely on methylation support for either synthesis or degradation. The total tox bundle is helpful to assess for toxins that may interfere with neurotransmitter synthesis, receptor function, and neurotransmitter metabolism. The weed zoomer is helpful to assess for gluten sensitivity that may affect the GAD enzyme, potentially affecting glutamate and GABA levels. And a hormone test such as urinary hormones can be used alongside a neurotransmitter test 
to assess for hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, and cortisol levels, which can have significant impacts on many neurotransmitters. Vibrant has many resources available to assist in the interpretation of neurotransmitter test results and to provide a deeper understanding of neurotransmitters overall. Vibrant now has a neurotransmitter interpretation guide, which can provide helpful information when reviewing a patient's results. We offer various webinar and educational videos that can allow for a deeper dive into neurotransmitters. We also offer clinical lab consultations to help providers interpret the results of the neurotransmitter test. Please make sure that when scheduling for a consult, that you choose a lab educator that does consult on neurotransmitters. Thank you so much for viewing the walkthrough video on neurotransmitters. We look forward to providing support to help your patients achieve optimal neurotransmitter balance.